He was um, quite a character as well, Roy, by all accounts. And um, he told us a little story when he joined us on Monday Night Football about how he tried to win you over. I always remember my first away trip having an argument with Roy Keane. Yeah. <laughs> and I think... What was from, it about? From then, <laughs> we were watching... <laughs> no, we were watching... Roy was watching the rugby the night before we played Newcastle away. And he went to get his food, so I turned over and put X Factor on and <laughs> hit the remote. <laughs> so he weren't happy about it anyway, so I had to argue him, but I think straight away he knew he respected me more for it for Yeah, because you watched that factor. A, <laughs> <laughs> no, but for having to go back at him and who won that argument? And um, no, it just come to a conclusion and ended, but I think he looked at it and he was he respects the fact that he, I was big enough to have a go back at him. Just wondering, Roy, what was it? Not watching the rugby or X Factor coming out was the biggest problem. We certainly didn't have an argument, let me tell you. I um yeah, I like I like my rugby league. And um yeah, I did someone did change the channel. And I wasn't happy. And we didn't have an argument about it because the next day I remember I came down for breakfast and uh, and Wayne said to me, Oh, um, did you find the controls? And I told them where to go. And that was it, really. So that's an argument. <laughs> God help us. But I certainly didn't didn't respect Wayne because he stood up to me because he wanted to watch the X Factor or whatever he wanted to watch. Um, I had a lot of respect for Wayne anyway because I thought he was a brilliant player. And um, I wouldn't say I warmed to the guy. Um, I certainly didn't dislike him. But... <laughs> You know, lads are on a different wavelength, different banter, and if hiding the controls was their type of banter, then <laughs> not for me. I wanted X Factor on to be fair. <laughs> you wanted grand designs on Gary. That's what you wanted on grand designs. <laughs> I do I actually remember I actually remember it. You somebody wrote me yesterday and told me about that we're gonna play it. I think I remember you did go up to your room, didn't you, quite quickly that night after the no, I didn't go up quite quickly, Gary. Did. No, I went up to watch the rugby league. I'm going to pee When you look back, we're talking about the pressures of the game and you have people are arguing about X Factor. That's what really happens in the dressing room, let me tell you, or a hotel. <laughs> Who wants to watch X Factor? Amazing. Tell me about what it's like for you. In the dressing room, when you've got young players coming, you're talking about Rooney and, and different types of, of banter and dealing with different people. How is that for you when you were, you know, the late twenties, early thirties at Manchester United, captain, maybe the you know, the yeah. main man in that dressing room, you've got younger players coming in like Rooney and Ronaldo. No, good point, Jamie. I I, I the, your dressing room's always changing. Every summer, you know, most summers is that one or two new players come in, the dynamics change, young players are coming in. And I'll be honest, the dressing room to, when I was getting to my um I suppose towards the end of my career, and I was looking around the dressing rooms and obviously people like Wayne and Rio and Fletcher and O'Shea and all these lads in the dressing room. And things were changing, the dynamics were changing, which I always used to roll with, which I didn't mind. I enjoyed it because it would give you a new type of energy. And especially if they were good players, you go, listen, they'll help us win trophies. But towards the end, I remember thinking with some of these lads, no, I don't, I'm not really getting some of these. I don't get their banter. I don't get their humour. I probably very early had a conversation with any of them. I was constantly looking at the bigger picture where they're going to be good players for Man United and that was the most important thing. So even when I left the club, there was a lot of players, mm. Jamie, there was a lot of players I didn't probably actually miss one bit. I just thought, no, they won't for me. The, the, the game was changing. I'd look around the dressing room times times after training, the amount of players were on their phones and all that type of thing. But I'm a bit uh, old school and a bit grumpy or whatever. I don't know. But I... I I didn't get it. I didn't get even Wayne, Rio. I, I, I didn't get that banter. I didn't get what they stood for sometimes. You know, that, that was just a personal thing. I just thought the game is changing, obviously, and I've changed with it. I'd, I changed myself since I was a young kid at Forest and going to United and body fats and sports science and being in brilliant dress rooms and dress rooms change sometimes. But towards the end at United with this type of players that were coming through, I didn't always get them. I have to say, I just thought personality-wise, they're not for me, but obviously they're all very, very good players and I was a professional and I, I was delighted to play with them. But in terms of having banter with them and having a cup of tea or a coffee or anything like that with them, no, forget it. 